has been keeping busy with work as she recovers from a blood clot in her head. The State Department says Clinton has been quite active on the phone, speaking with staff and reviewing paperwork as doctors monitor her progress. For the latest news and analysis, log on to IRNUSANews.com. Black chaps take it to my lips. Raspberry cream I can't resist. Flavor fruity, oh so juicy. Just give one to my friend Lucy. Burst the berries, creamy rich. Chapstick always on my lips. La 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 la. La 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 la. Apply new chapstick raspberry cream and apply happy. Luscious raspberry flavor, 10 juicy moisturizers. Grab one from the coffin cold aisle. La 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 la. La la Chapstick. Apply happy. Egypt is scheduled to start taking delivery of U.S. taxpayer-funded military equipment later this month. Our correspondent Sean Scott Ferguson brings us more. To be precise, 10 F-16 fighter jets and 200 Abrams tanks. Part of a foreign aid package signed when Hosni Mubarak was president, there is a growing chorus of critics saying the Obama administration should pull the plug on the $213 million deal. Top of the reasons for doing so is the Muslim Brotherhood's mixed signals to Washington, the aim to create a Sharia dictatorship in Egypt, their relationship with Israel, and fiscal problems back at home here in the U.S. If the deal went ahead, the F-16s would add to the 200 fighter jets Egypt already possesses, while the M1A1 Abrams tanks would increase Egypt's tank arsenal by 20%. The children who escaped last month's shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, have been welcomed with their parents at a school in a neighboring town. The new school has been refurbished especially for them and renamed for their old one. Superintendent Janet Robinson says the change is appropriate because, quote, they are the Sandy Hook family. She spoke after a private open house for the families at the former Chalk Hill School in Monroe. The cruise line that operates the Queen Mary 2 says an outbreak of gastrointestinal illness has subsided as the trip heads back to port. The Cunard line says just two passengers have suspected cases of norovirus, down from more than 200 cases reported by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control as the ship made its way through the Caribbean. The ship has been carrying more than 2,600 passengers on a 12-night voyage. With IRN, USA Radio News, I'm Hope Duggar. What you want to know. What you need to know. This is South Florida's Health and Wealth Radio, AM 1470, WNN. Here's some great news from Tom Trento, host of the daily WNN Trento Vision Show. Due to the unparalleled success of the Trento Vision Show, you now have an amazing opportunity to advertise on the Trento Vision Show. If you want more information about this excellent opportunity for your business, please contact Tom Trento at 561-319-5533. Or you can email him, tom at trentovision.tv. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to Trento Vision, where bad ideas get pulverized and the truth will set you free. Trento Vision is hosted by Tom Trento. Tom can be reached at 561-319-5533 or Tom at TrentoVision.tv. Listen and watch every weekday from 3 to 6 p.m. on AM 1470 WNN and TrentoVision.tv. Now, let's get a peek at Tom's view of the world. Here's Tom Trento. Uh, you're listening to the Emancipation Proclamation Show on Trento Vision here. Um, the uh, second day of January, one day and 150 years after President Abraham Lincoln lifted up the Emancipation Proclamation, January 1, 1863. But still some New Jersey school teachers can't understand what the hell is going on. There's Jersey school teachers out there, nitwit New Jersey school teachers. I love having a radio show. They don't have the faintest idea, and they write me letters. Give me a break, you know. Okay, well, Let me tell all, you about I'm New Jersey want school you to teachers. Define nitwit. Let me tell you about New Jersey school teachers. Okay. They're all in a union. They make a zillion dollars to start with, okay? Yeah. The, the one in particular I'm talking about, 
I think he's retired. Right? He's got <laughs> scams going on all over the place, but I think he's retired. And he worked like one hour a day, right? He'd, he'd like go by to school. He knew the vice president, the principal, whatever they are. Yo, I'm here. Okay, see you later. You know, that was his day. And then, uh, then he got 1,400 weeks of vacation a year, right? And... And and they just send out these kids, these knucklehead kids. They go, yeah, yeah, one hundred one is seven. Okay, you're fine. Get out of here. You know, unbelievable New Jersey school teacher. Watch me get all these calls. <laughs> I'm a product of New Jersey school teachers. But I I'm a productive of New Jersey school. It's teachers. not current New Jersey school teachers, no, no, mind no, you. No. They're, they're all perfect. retired. <laughs> under under Governor Christie, they're all they're all perfect. Yeah. yeah. If we all, oh, oh, and you got to be a Democrat. If you're a school teacher in New Jersey, you got to be a Democrat. You got to join the union. They're like robots. But I'm a school teacher in New Jersey. I'm a school teacher oh, in New Jersey. I, I heard something funny about Christie the other day. My wife brought it up. She goes. What is this love affair Republicans have with Christie? He is such a loser. Oh, he's a total loser. <laughs> he goes, why? Why are people like? Oh, if we just listened to Christie, we, he'd have been president. If he'd oh, been vice God. president, oh my God! If he been, if he had him, we'd have be president. He's, he's going to eat I himself guess. to death, so it doesn't matter. I mean, he's wider than he is tall. But the, the guy. Uh, okay, let's not well, get anyway, into the looks of him when there's <laughs> enough to pick out about what he stands uh, his, for his, his or yeah, doesn't. Yeah, well, he's a yeah. so I don't like the guy. So, um, but any in any event, it's He's emancipation. He's a squish on the jihad, and that's all I need he to is, know about. He is. He is. But, but, but the point being, going back to the Emancipation Proclamation, had strong. St- Don't go too deeply. No, I'm because I got to do no. some stuff before yeah, we, we get into do it. Some no, housekeeping. Well, the the same mentality that was back during the slaveholders, who were all Democrats, who all wanted to make people's existence non-existent okay is is the st- same mentality oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that that crosses till today is y- so obama is the master obama is the he new is. master he because really is. because that's the one who's in he says i'm you know if you just i'll trade security i'll give you guys security i'll give you guys comfort i'll give you guys a way of like just just listen to me it, i mean the analogy you got to admit the analogy is amazing. I do. Because I do a, admit it, but I just don't think it's nihilism. His no, no, the nihil, We're off to nihilism. Yeah, no, 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 no I'm no. saying I was dis- That's the aspect of it well, that I was it, disagreeing with. There is with. a point, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I got to keep these guys separated. Okay. You, you got to keep them water separated. Them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> or give them both coffee for something to drink. Um, but uh, we got to talk about in this concluding hour at ten minutes past five o'clock on the East Coast. We got to talk about. The comparison of um, the historic model of of slavery, Mm -hmm. pull the principles out, to what Obama is doing to the black community, to the immigrant community, to the folks that... uh, uh, that he's empowering. He uses these leftist, socialist, yeah. communist terms. Yeah. He's basically saying, "I'm empowering I'm you to empowering be a ward of the you to plantation." Enslave yourselves. Uh, yep. That's it, what just, the issue is. And the point being, we brought up are enslaving themselves. And the point being, yep. the point absolutely. being was, they think they're taking care of them, just like the slave owners of the South says, "Listen, yep. don't mess point. with our system because you know we're taking care of them. We're giving them existence. We're taking care of them. They're part of our family. You let them go, they're going to go to other states. They may <laughs> vote a different way. They can carry weapons. Oh no, we don't want that. Yeah, no, this is bad news. All right, we got to do that. But I want to hear during the break. You were telling me about your um, your initial epiphany oh. <laughs> uh, coming from Quebec." Is right. it Quebec or Quebec? Quebec. 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 Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and what what happened when your your folks said we're moving to the promised land? Yeah, I mean, they basically they sold it to me as moving to the promised land when in fact the promised land, the true promised land, had been rejected. Um, because there was a big discussion within the family of should we leave Quebec and go to Israel or are we going to leave Quebec and move to the States? Oh. And so um, there was a lot of fighting leading up to um, the leaving. You'd have been a little Israeli running around Tel Aviv right now. Yeah, oh. yeah. And uh, and so they, they did settle on coming to the States and and sold it to me as – you know, kind of the promised land. And I always had this vision of the United States as really the, the mo- you know, the source of benevolence in the world, really, as, as you know, the, the light of nations, really, 
um, the moral high ground for the rest of the world to follow. And, uh, and the protector of Israel and the protector of the Jewish people everywhere and no anti-Semitism and all this kind of stuff. And, and of course, it turned out to be quite different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, when I got here, I was shocked when I landed in my first American history class. And, and I, I came into school right at the Civil War. Oh. And, uh, You're a lot and you I younger was, than you are. I, thank you. <laughs> I was so shocked. I was shocked. I was hurt. I was devastated. I, I, I couldn't believe. I mean, there were race battles within my school. Um, I learned about segregation, the history of segregation, you know, in, in, in the 20th century. And I just, I couldn't believe it. My American history teacher was a very, a true, you would appreciate it. He was um, a classic liberal. Right. Um, a classic liberal, um, older Jewish man um, who took me under his wing and said, okay, you need to learn some stuff about this country and where we came from and, and how we can fix it. Right. And he assigned to me separate projects from the rest of the class. And one of them was um, he wanted me to research the history of the KKK, <laughs> which <laughs> I know you would appreciate. Yeah, it's a, but I was shocked and disappointed. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe this was the United States. But then I grew to appreciate that, hey, I mean, they fought a civil war over this, right. okay, mm-hmm. because they couldn't agree on it. And and there have been very strong movements in this country of, of really protecting people um, from this kind of uh, racism. Craziness. So, yeah. One, yeah. one quick paragraph I think I really appreciate. I'm reading here, and I Google copperheads, all right? Copperheads. A copperhead was a member of a vocal group of Democrats located in northern United States of the Union who opposed the American Civil War, wanting an immediate peace settlement with the Confederates. Republicans started calling anti-war Democrats copperheads, likening them to venomous snakes. Snakes. The peace Democrats accepted the label, but for them, the copperhead was like was likeness of liberty, which they cut from copper pennies and proudly wore as badges. So they were just so pro peace that they said, "No, no, no, no! We, you you can't bring in you can't." If you freeze. try to if you try to abolish slavery, you're going to ruin the country. Let them have their slavery, appease the appease peace them. the South. It's the now same. Let's just get on with life. It's the same. Friggin' copperhead <laughs> Democrats <laughs> today, man. That's a new term the, for them. The copperheads. The, we, yeah. should, we should be calling Democrats today the copperheads. What's her name? Uh, Debbie Wasserman. She's copperhead. a copperhead. Da- yeah, Debbie oh, Wasserman. Totally. The copperheads. copperheads. They're called yeah. copperheads. Yeah. And it's the same mentality where they think they're doing a, a favor. Okay. Oh, yeah, peace, peace. We got peace, a new peace. term, a new historical term. That's good. I like that one. Um, the Ku Klux Klan. You know, they got that name? <laughs> you mentioned the Klan, which which grew right, up right, right after right, the right. war, obvious, because yeah. they said, uh, yeah. we don't like the way things are going in. In 1920, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Ku Klux Klan? Any go, idea? Go Any ahead. Idea? I oh, remember it. Googling real quickly. No, I remember it. I can't. I'm looking it's a Greek for word. something else. It's a Greek yeah. word. Oh, I didn't know this. Ku Klux is, means circle. And they were just a circle. They were a band of uh, brothers. They were a clan, a circle of uh, brothers and a, and a, a clan, a group. Just all it means is a Greek word. I believe if I have this word correctly, that their founding document was the Chloran. <laughs> okay, hold on, I'm serious. Oh, that's oh no. It is. Oh, that could no. be. That could be. But anyway, here's what we're doing on TrentoVision.tv. And um, you can keep us bringing you this wonderful information in the jocularity and uh, making jihad and slavery fun. <laughs> Adding that to it um, on WNN 1470. And we have uh, Mike over there, Silent Mike, hasn't done a traffic report in two hours. Mike, nobody in South Florida knows what's going on on the highway. Please, an updated traffic report. Uh, it's busier than it was yesterday. Busier than it was yesterday, folks. <laughs> yesterday was New Year's, so Pertinent that's New Year's Day. probably yeah, the day why. After New Year's 75 Day. degrees. Years in the, old already. 75 degrees in Uh-oh. the studio here at Beasley Broadcasting Company. We're on the 105th floor of the Beasley Tower overlooking 
the Atlantic Ocean, and yes, what do you have and right outside? And it is outside? 75 degrees. Oh, it's a state of equilibrium, not nihilistic No, here. because as soon as you said it, it went up a degree. Oh, it went up a degree. Look yeah, at that. Okay. I think you breathed too hard on uh, it. The, is it. You're saying there's but hot air coming a, out of my mouth. You know what? I want to make a point about um, slavery. Let me it, do a little housekeeping. Oh, you want to do housekeeping. Okay. You know, we have to pay the bills. And the right. bill is due. And thank in fact. goodness that the bills are in your name. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get your checkbooks out on the 150th plus one day of the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipate Trento Vision from the burdens of debt. Okay? Because debt is slavery and slavery is debt. You can make a tax deductible check and start the new year the right way. Out to um, go to TrentoVision.tv. Just click on Donate Securely. And uh, if you could become an $18 a month partner, put your little credit card in there. We don't know your numbers. We know nothing about that. But every month, $18 will be taken out, and that goes to help feed CJ. This is helping <laughs> feed her, CJ. Her and little Timmy. And little Timmy, yes. <laughs> Me and my eight children who only eat oatmeal. Yes. <laughs> gruel. Gruel. Um, has nothing to do with putting, putting fuel in my Bentley. I will not use the money for putting fuel in my Bentley. <laughs> or fuel the TW jet. Or the jet, anything like that. So uh, go to TrentoVision.tv. You can reach me, Tom, at TrentoVision.tv. But uh, your donations are seriously tax deductible and more seriously very needed and greatly appreciated. Yes. Um, let's see. We have Watchdog Wire, our very good friend Rich Swire. Yes. Dr. Rich Swire has a blog called WatchdogWire.com. Watchdog Swire, right? It's the Watchdog <laughs> Wire on the Internet, uh, watching the government for yeah. fraud, Citizen abuse, journalists. Citizen Ruth journalists. Ro you Ruth can, Roman writes for them Ruth as well. Ruth yep, yeah. You can get involved. WatchdogWire.com. And do we have the uh, soap cleaning your dishes? We're getting um, comments on that. Yeah, Here's another really one of our uh, sponsors, Really Clean Dishes, and here we go. Dishes out of the dishwasher, they aren't really clean. Can you see film on your glassware? I hate that. You probably that. think it's your dishwasher, but it's not. That guy's got a good it's voice. detergent. Really Clean detergent. is a dishwasher detergent booster, and it really works. Just add a really clean tablet along with your favorite detergent. Really clean tablets are not sold in stores. Order them at reallycleandishes.com. That's reallycleandishes.com. Reallycleandishes.com, um, and you can go to that website. And if you want to clean your dishes and figure out how to clean up America, go to Stand Up America US. So Stand Up America, us or us.org. Yes. General Paul Vallely's, um fabulous website, a lot of uh, insider information, a lot of uh, intelligence information. General Vallely uh, on our show regularly, and he served in uh, Vietnam. He was a major general, uh, head of special forces um, groups, and he now owns a um, uh, gun company, Nemo Arms, a significant gun company that will be providing uh, high-tech munitions, uh, high-tech armament to the United States military. He has a blog, and he is a hardcore patriot. Let me tell you, StandUpAmericaUS.org. StandUpAmericaUS.org. Go there. I'm going to kind of clean things up so we can take this right to the end with our conversation on emancipation, proclamation. So anything, other little housekeeping things? You guys see we need to do? The yeah. cl the Koran is the handbook of the Ku Klux Klan. The Koran. Just a little housekeeping on fact checking. <laughs> the Koran. The Koran. Okay. Is the handbook of the we Ku Klux that. Klan. That's good. I like that one. That's got legs. All right. Well, what, today we're doing this, folks. We are recognizing that uh, with this administration, the Obama administration, uh, where an unknown senator comes out of uh, Illinois, a, a, um, uh, a corrupt state, comes out of Chicago, a corrupt city. How could you say that, Tom? Because I used to live there. Comes out of that city, comes out of the south side, comes out of Reverend Jeremiah Wright's church, where he honored Louis Farrakhan, Reverend Jeremiah Wright did, as a man of the year. 
our president, pre- you people are idiots if you voted for this guy. You really are. Um, he sat in this church for 20 years listening to a hate-filled preacher spew out racism, anti-American doc- doctrine, total anti-Semitism, and in 20 years, the president says, I never, I never heard anything. I never so, heard I, anything. I, I, I never I saw anything. Yeah. And the dummies that vote for him say, well, he, you know, he didn't hear it. He wasn't listening. He wasn't there that day. But he's so smart, he doesn't miss a trick. But he wasn't, he didn't, you know, he wasn't there. All right, well, in any event, we, the proof is in the election. He's been there for four years. Well, Tom, he won. Well, there may be more people who want a second grade, a second rate country, more people that want European socialism, more people that want complete dependence upon the state, more people that want security rather than freedom and liberty there may be more people in the united states and you get (laughs) you get what you vote for friends we believe those of us in this room and many of our friends that we bring on that the guys got it right back then in 1776 doesn't mean they were perfect doesn't mean there was there wasn't complete inconsistency in many respects between the the acknowledgement of slavery but the desire for free people, and we'll get into those details and explain all of that. But in terms of constructing the principles that guide the majority of the people in a proper way in a civilized fashion, there's been nothing in 236 years, nothing, any experiment ever on the face of the earth that has provided more freedom, more liberty, more prosperity than what these founders, framers did and the blood and the and their honor and their fortunes that it cost them to provide these liberties for us today. That's why we're doing these shows on Americana, and we're doing them on the dates that the actual events took place, like 150 years ago. The right. What kind of centennial? Ses- sesquicentennial. <laughs> sesquicentennial oh, celebration. Rotten. That's why we're rotten. doing it. But we're not here just to improve your knowledge, unlike New Jersey school teachers, of history <laughs> in your mind. We're here to move your heart, move your passion, move your feet to take back this country. We're forming the ideology of a cultural revolution that will take place in 2013. Not a military revolution, not fighting the government, none of that stuff. Defeating the ideology of those who occupy offices in the government. The government is a structure. The seats in the House, the seats in the Senate are where the revolution takes place. You don't pull those people out. You go do the hard work of defeating them at election time. We're preparing now for the elections in two years and the elections in four years. Join with us if you want. Tell the people out there, your friends and enemies even, about this show. That's why we do this stuff with a point of of application. In particular, preparing people for the onslaught of Islamic Jihad. 2013 is going to be a year of terrorism. We guarantee it. It's going to increase worldwide. It's going to increase in the United States of America. And we anticipate, because the clock is running out, we anticipate a confrontation between Israel and Iran, and we anticipate some sort of chemical, biological, or nuclear attack on the homeland here in the United States of America. We have sheikhs in the Middle East saying, 10 pounds of anthrax uh, smuggled in through tunnels from Mexico into California will kill 300,000 people in one hour. Let's see how that plays out in your United States of America. It was five, oh, my God. It was five pounds. Five-pound bag. Well, uh, the, the, the... Just, just the, fact-checking, the, nothing, nothing critical. I, just the, the more data, than you think. The data I read this morning was 10 pounds. Well, he said five, okay. I'm just saying. Uh, who said that? It's actually the director of national security. No, I'm, I wasn't reading that. Okay. That's, I, That's I another guy who said I wouldn't it. trust. <laughs> no, this is back in the night, way back. Oh, no, just a report came out today about uh, oh, okay. about the increased number of Iranian agents. In, no, we all know they're there. Right. But they've increased in South America. And they're they're equipping Mexicans with tunnel building capability because that's what they do in the uh, in the Middle East build these tunnels from Gaza to Egypt, 
And the uh, the quotation was 10 pounds, 300,000 people. Can you imagine that? Okay, that's amazing. Okay, Either I'm going to have terrific. to interrupt you guys because um, when you're talking about 2013 – and uh, and fighting the jihad in 2013, and, and Mark, you've uh, you've looked this up before. Um, since we are starting a new year, I think it's very interesting to see how does the religion of peace fare at the beginning of this year. And here are some. Oh, yeah, oh. this is very interesting. Well, tell, on... Let me tell everybody what you're doing. We uh, we track here. We fight the jihad. We track the um, the religion of peace, Islam. We track their uh, their track record of love and peace. And so far, what's the report? And so far, on New Year's Eve in Syria, a pregnant Christian woman is left widowed after her husband is beheaded by Islamic radicals and fed to dogs. Also on Christmas Eve in Iraq, Sunnis set off a bomb next to a group of six pilgrims, killing five. Um, four women and children are among seven innocents slain in their homes by the, the Islamic Army of Iraq. Um, in and there's Pakistan, no war going on in Iraq. No. In Pakistan, one civilian is killed when religious hardliners blow a girl's school. Um, in, also in Pakistan, six women are among seven humanitarian workers brutally machine gunned by Mujahideen. And also in Pakistan... Um, Pakistani Taliban set off a bomb at a political rally, taking out at least six participants. So, in the week of Christmas to New Year's, the Jihad report is 50 Jihad attacks, two Allahu Akbars, <laughs> 192 dead bodies, and 231 critically injured from Christmas to New Year's. And an Allahu Akbar is a suicide attack. Yeah. Okay. It's a Happy grand total is twenty thousand one hundred sixty nine, right? Yeah. Okay. But but here's here's the since just since nine eleven. Here's the yeah. critical point, and for those of you who have been following the whole show, we've been discussing doctrine of uh, of Islamic jihad, Christianity, all of this. You can search the scriptures. You can sh- search the, um, the 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 Humash. You can search the commentaries, the Jewish commentaries. You can search the uh, the uh, the Humash. The Humash. Uh, you could you could search not just the essential documents of Judaism or Christianity, but the ancillary commentaries and uh, other informative pieces whereas the quran has the uh, the sunnah the life of the the way that islam works allah gave to muhammad a book called the quran and muslims have to follow it exactly but he his, the final prophet muhammad uh, the writings that have been compiled through the years about him are called the sunnah you, you're supposed to follow his life implicitly and explicitly and the hadith are interpretations about what actually took place in his life. So a good Muslim has three documents by which to live. Search and compare Christian Jewish documents and the Islamic doc- documents in light of the week of horror and, and uncivilized barbaric behavior. And Christianity and Judaism do not lead to killing other people as the doctrines of Islam. Every one of those people that did that are following the fundamental doctrines right. of Islam. That's right. Because that's the essence of... now. now because that's what the book says. Now, if you expect the imam in New York or San Francisco or Chicago or Florida to agree, you're out of your friggin' mind as much as if you expect President Obama to say, yeah. yes, I'm a doctrinaire Marxist. Yeah. They're not going to say that. But you're supposed to be smart enough to read behind the lines, okay? That's what we're here for, to yeah. give you all some information. Oh, my God. Who do we have on the line? Uh, we have Roger on the line. Take him on. Let's see who Roger, Hi, Roger. is. Roger. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year, CJ. Tom, Hi, Mike, uh, Mark. Hi, Roger. How are you? Okay, we're doing great. Hey, I just want to remind you, okay, as long as uh, CJ could use words like sesquicentennial, okay, I want to remind you that there was a show early on, okay, only your older um, viewers will, will remember this show, but Ku Klux uh, Fran and Ku Klux Fran and Ali. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Yes, we yeah, all. That was just, unfortunately, I remember it also. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I just wanted to dial in. You've gone through about seven subjects since uh, since I got on yes. the line. So yes, we're... not what I had originally dialed in. Uh, you got to be uh, quick today. on your toes on Trento Vision, let me tell you, man, you know. 
Well, if you can't, you know, you got to you got to have a scorecard to keep up. That's, that's right. For sure. That's right. Um, nonetheless, okay, I uh, was talking. Yeah, you were talking about the uh, slavery, okay, and uh, just one of the things that had come to my mind is that uh, you know back when when uh, segregation was was uh, rampant in this country, the most uh, uh, most heard complaints that you would hear is that. You know, they, it wasn't right that they had their own water fountains that we that we gave them and made them sit in the back of the bus. Okay, and when I say them, I mean the black folks. Okay, so uh, you know they complained about all of that, and now that we've gotten rid of all of that, if you go on to um, any, you know, just Google black organizations, you will find that they have segregated themselves with um, with an organization for just about any kind of black individual you could think of. Organization of black. Painters, organization of black real estate agents, real, uh, organizations for black nurses and police officers. There's absolutely no area of uh, the workforce that is not covered by a black organization. Yet, if you Google white organizations, you come up with the Ku Klux Klan, <laughs> and then and then immediately it goes to White Mountain Coffee, <laughs> and they sort of run out of white organizations real quick. <laughs> well, so yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty much what I was going to say. And, you know, and a lot of that want segregation, then they shouldn't put it upon themselves. A, a lot of that, and thank you very much for, you, for calling, Roger. A lot of that is. Uh, is the the Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, the race yeah. baiters? Yeah. Well, the race they, they, they formed an yeah. industry. They've created an industry yeah. of um, of using race yeah. to make a lot of money. Those guys it's live a shakedown. A, they live a large it's lifestyle. A shakedown. You know? look, look, but the universities are behind it. The media is behind it. Everybody's for it. I mean, we t- we talked about it the other day. Well, San- up at um, Sanford. Yeah, we talked about it the other day. Exactly. Yeah, with with a white Hispanic. Who, yeah. who do we have on the line? Uh, we have IQ on the line. Our buddy IQ. Our buddy IQ. Oh, IQ yeah. calling from. Uh, let's see. Undisclosed. Somewhere. Undisclosed location. In uh, a different time zone. Did we lose our engineer. No, he no, got. He's it. there. IQ, are you? This is Tom. Are you with us? I am with you. How are you, my friend? I'm to your uh, chat, chit chat. Well, uh, happy New I'm Year. Fine. I hope that it. 2013 year for America. Thank you very, very much. Thank um, you. You're gonna have to lower your radio or the computer in the background. We're getting some uh, feedback, so if you can mute that, we can hear you better. How have you been? And um, we're we're talking about the American Emancipation Proclamation, 150 year uh, anniversary. But we were and also, also talk, talking about the zakat. We were also going to bring in. Yeah, we we laid out some of the zakat that goes toward. Uh, uh, helping free slaves, interestingly enough, but we were going to bring in the comparison between Islamic slavery and American slavery and make some distinctions about that. What are your thoughts about all this stuff? Well, first of all, the slavery of the black uh, people, for those who really want to know, <laughs> like Sharpton and Farahan, who don't want to know, were, slight, were started by the uh, Arabs. Yes. Yep. In the Arabic language, throughout the history of the Arabs, the black man is called Abd, A-B-D, Abd. Reason. Abd means slave. The plural for them is Abid, A-B-E-E-D, slaves. And even in modern uh, language, even in the Arabic of today, when they speak about black people, they speak about them not as Aswad. Aswad means black in the Arabic language, but no, as Abd, slave. So the slavery that uh, the... Most American, African Americans blame on the white Christians, which is of course not true, was started by the Arabs. They conquered Africa in the 7th and 8th centuries, and they considered, as usual, anybody who is not a Muslim as fair game to slavery and uh, murder and assassination and rape and plunder. Spoils war. And they had hundreds of millions of people available literally in the sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa. It is estimated that for 14 million uh, slaves who were sold to the white man on the ships west of Africa to go to the Americas, by the way, only 5% of them landed in what we call the United States of America, 140 million black Africans, men, women, and children, were destroyed. Uh, exterminated in the process. I don't know how many 
American blacks know these stories, and they are factual. They are not propaganda. Oh, I didn't know this. But they are available. The information is available. And it's factual. The white man stayed on the ship on the West African coast. They didn't go into the heart of Africa. They were too clever for that. To go into the heart of Africa, you can get diseases, you can get killed, you can get uh, eaten by animals. The slavers were Arabs and black uh, Africans who converted to the religion of Islam. The moment somebody converts to the religion of Muhammad, immediately they speak about Allah and Muhammad, they become different human beings. They become beasts, the beasts of prey, the predators. And that's exactly what happened. Black Africans who were converted to Islam were the greatest slavers in Africa. Mm. And as, as we speak today, in Mali, in the Sudan, and some other African states, slavery continues today. You don't believe me? Check it on Google. Check it with the United Nations. No, no, we know. We know even though many of the uh, United Nations countries have to sign pledges, oaths, all of these uh, formal documents to end slavery. We we know it's going on. What do you know about um, IQ? And by the way, for our listening and viewing audience at 38 minutes past 5 o'clock, IQ Al Rasoli is an expert, one of the world's leading experts on, uh, on Islam. Mm -hmm. He's um, Iraqi-born, Arabic-speaking. He's somewhere in an undisclosed uh, location, mm -hmm. and he writes and speaks and comments extensively on uh, on the uh, the analysis of Islam from all different points of view, all aspects. Uh, IQ, tell us a little bit if you know anything about the the uh, use in uh, in Islam of eunuchs of eunuchs. Uh. Eunuchs. The eunuchs were needed. Eunuchs are men who were castrated, so they can't have sex with a woman. And these men were used to take care of the harem. The harem was where the khalifa or the king or the uh, Arab ruler had his women. And we're not talking about four women which are allowed only by Islam as wives. They, are, they have unlimited number of concubines. Some of the khalifas of uh, the Ottoman Empire, they had almost a thousand women. Some of them were gifts. Many of them were uh, bought in slave markets. And they could have been white, Chinese, any race, any color. The eunuchs were used to protect them and to take care of them. And most of them were from Africa. To castrate these people needed special uh, operation. And of course, they don't have the modern technology. So for every eunuch alive, 10 died. But they had an un unending supply the the Arab leaders, when one of them over, uh, overturned, overthrown one other leader, the army of blacks who belonged to the first leader was exterminated. And the new army of blacks was brought about. I'm talking about tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people. By the way, this is recorded history. It's not deniable. Anyone who wants to deny it has got to disprove me based on facts. And, uh -oh. the there. <laughs> and they'll lose some money if yeah, they do I that. Say, let me are tell you. Given some money uh, for I want, that. I want to ask one other question about this. Is Mark? <laughs> Mark? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Mark has a question for you. IQ. Hang on. I, I see references in the uh, in Quranic texts and, and and other places to uh, the word raisin heads. How does that apply to slavery and blacks? Raisin head is what a black man is, because their hair looks like a raisin. You know, when you look at the head, the head of a black man, their hair is short and very, very curly. So it looks like a raisin. So it is a racist remark. Oh, and it is in the Quran, by the way. And it is also in the Hadith. People don't understand and they can't understand because they have not read this, the subject. They have not studied the subject. That's why most people cannot believe a religion, so-called Islam, can be so vile. Why? Because they... They think it's a religion, but Islam is not a religion. Islam is a cult belief system, the cult of Muhammad. And Allah is most certainly not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham. Can I prove it? Yeah. 
312 audio videos right. to prove it. <laughs> 780 chapters to prove it. So, I mean, yes. all I need is somebody to just prove me. Well, can I can I ask you this? In the United States, especially in the, um, uh, there's a big movement to convert um, African Americans to Islam, prisons, especially yeah. in the prisons. Yeah. Why are, why are these um, Islamists or practitioners of Islam going over, the, uh, going after the American blacks if they hate blacks so much? CJ, you are missing the point. In Islam, in the mindset of the Muhammad Muslim, it is not quality. It is a matter of quantity. Ah. Now, why? Why? Of course. They are proud. There are 1,500 million Muslims, although 1,200 million of them don't speak Arabic and know nothing about the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> right. And this is a fact. By the way, why do they go to the criminals? Simple. Because the Quran is a criminal manuscript. The Quran actually sanctifies exactly what the criminals in the criminal justice system in America want. So you have a, a belief system that gives them, hey, you can rape, you can murder, you can slaughter, you can plunder all the infidels. And the infidels are 80% of humanity. My goodness. You know, you have a field day. That's why a Christian or a Jewish priest or a rabbi cannot convert anybody in the prison system in America. By the way, now they are converting the Hispanics. Yep, that's big now. Yeah, yep. that's big, yeah. Uh, yeah. One other oh, quick question. not in America, somehow I, I, know, I know a lot. Uh, one other quick question is, uh, th this word gets bantied around that uh, kafir simply means non-believer. Uh, it's a little bit more than that, is, is it not? Kafir is anybody who is not a Muslim. It's very simple. It's really not complicated. Only the politically correct idiots and the criminals try to twist it. It doesn't change. Unbeliever, infidel, kafir, kafirun is exactly what we are. Those who do not believe in Allah and in Muhammad as Rasulullah. And we must be and killed. That is the messenger of Allah. And we must be killed. We must be eradicated, correct? Well, no. We have three choices, to be fair. I mean, I've got to be fair to the Muhammadan Muslims. They, they, give us, they give humanity three choices. One, to convert to Islam whether we like it or not. Two, to submit to Islam under Sharia law in humiliation and degradation forever. And three, to be slaughtered. You choose. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I made my choice. I'm okay. going to fight them to the death. And when they that say their death, not mine. And when they say Christians are part of the book and Jews are part of the book, are they talking about, like, like Tom's a Christian part of the book who believes in Jesus Christ, who believes in the resurrection of Jesus, who believes in uh, that uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Is that the type of Christians they're talking about? No, no, no. You see, this is a duplicity here. The Quran speaks about the people of the book who are supposed to be Christians and Jews. But what do the Muslims tell you? Ask any Muslim professor or scholar or imam. The books that we have today, the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Bible, have been corrupted. So we are not anymore the people of the book. Does that make sense to you now? It's so important you understand that. We are no more the people of the book. So what do they, what, how do they define a Christian and how do they define a, a, a Jewish well, a Christian person? Christian is an infidel. By the way, being a Christian is the worst thing you can be. Why? Because as a Christian, you believe God has a son called Jesus. This is kufr. This is the ultimate kufr. To associate another human being with God is the ultimate kufr, the ultimate blasphemy. Don't take my word for it. Don't no, no, it. we don't. So, so, so do Muslims believe that when, uh, I mean, they, they, you, you said that they, they've corrupted the book. They've corrupted. We, their, we, their, 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 are, they blame us. Right. So, so, so what they believe a Christian is, under their definition, that is corrupted, that, that, uh, that Jesus is not the Son of God, and Jesus... Yes, of course not the Son of God. If the Quran denies that Jesus is the Son of God. The Quran denies it. You remember, in the last talk I had with you, I said I can destroy Muhammad and his Quran in less than 60 seconds. How do I do that? In four or five verses of the Quran, Allah tells Muhammad that he revealed the Gospels to Jesus. And in one verse, he says, the same Allah... That Jesus did not die on the cross. 
Well, my question is simple. If, let us assume, Allah did reveal the Gospels to Jesus, and all four Gospels say that Jesus died on the cross and resurrected the third day, how is it possible for the same Allah, who is supposed to be God, not to know that he made a mistake in the second version? End of conversation. 60 seconds is done. No more Muhammad, no more Allah, but, no God. Yeah, well, I mean, wouldn't they say that uh, the, the Gospels have been perverted. The original Gospels, which nobody has anymore, they'll say, uh, had the story right, but then through the years, the strange stories about the resurrection and all that occurred. And that's usually where they go with that issue. Of course, but I mean, anybody with two brain cells of logic will ask this idiot Muslim, if you don't have the original, which is uncorrupted, then how in hell's name or heaven's name are you telling us that you know what the answer is? Oh, that's a good point. That's a very it's good a very point. Good point. It's the most essential point. If they don't have the proof of the pudding, how can they eat it? Yep. I got a question. It's really it, very simple. Honestly, anything about Islam is very simple. I would, yes, I would like to put out a challenge right now to anybody listening, 888-565-1470, who is a Muslim who disagrees with any of this. Let us know. And give us a call. Yeah, don't hold your breath, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I know. They, 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 they don't. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll listen to both sides, and we'll let, let, let the audience decide. we got to bring IQ back maybe next week. Hey, IQ, you want to come back next week, and uh, we'll do a show? You call me, you invite me, and all the horses in the world will not stop me. <laughs> okay, all right, and all right. we'll promote a big show. But we, okay. we email me. You know my email. All right. We got email you. Me, tell me what you want, what time, and how long, and God willing, I'll be with you. Okay, right. we thank That's you. Happy thing. New Year, IQ. Thank you. Thanks for calling, and we appreciate it. Bye. Okay, bye bye. Great guy, he really yeah. is. He's uh, um, that was uh, that was very interesting. That's if you don't have the source about material, the, the slavery thing, I, yeah, it makes logical sense. I mean, because most of the Muslims come in there and they do the trafficking. Because the white guys ain't going to get off the ship and go in inland. That's they're they're afraid of the disease. They're they're there to trade slaves back and forth. Okay, but if we're talking about slavery here in the United States... Which we're going to have to continue we're tomorrow. Saying, you know, what happened 150 years ago? What's happening today? What's happening today is that culturally, the people have chosen to enslave themselves. Right. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. Like I said, to. the copperhead, we the don't same mentality. Think, we don't want to think. We don't want to take care of ourselves. We want to be children. We want someone to take care of us. And we are enslaving ourselves to the government. We're, we're trading security we for freedom. We are enslaved by our needs for comfort. And security. Trading no, it's security. not even security. No, but, but the, not, pa the, panacea, the, pa security. the panacea yeah. of security versus... It's for comfort. For comforts and, and, oh, I don't have to... Oh, yeah. Exactly. Well, here's what we're going to do. Because um, as normally... Happens around As normally here. <laughs> happens around here, we ran out of time again. We, we get off on very interesting stuff, we and uh, on. Yeah. We, we say, okay, we got the time to do this. But, uh, we, we don't work for the man, okay? <laughs> we do what we need to do, we do what we yeah. want to do, and we we make sure we get you good information. Yeah. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, we have um, Rob Muse uh, coming on. He is one of the country's top, absolute top um First Amendment attorneys, mm -hmm. and he's a partner with David Ural Shemi. Uh -huh. And uh, let me see. His... Yerushalami or Ural uh, Shemi? Yerushalmi. <laughs> yeah, he says however you want, yeah. whatever you want to call me. Yeah. Um, they are with the American Freedom Law Center. American Freedom Law Center deal with First Amendment cases. They put out a, uh, a press release today on a case that they're dealing with. <gasps> In the Sixth Circuit, Christian woman fired by university for speaking out against homosexuality. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's a very fascinating case. They're rep representing the Christian woman. She uh, basically wrote a little opinion about uh, uh, a comparison between the uh, black struggle from slavery to freedom, mm -hmm. comparing it to the homosexuals' struggle from homosexual you know, no human rights to the freedom using the the historical slavery analogy and this this i think she's a black woman a christian woman she she wrote a personal opinion said that is so historically wrong it's crazy and, and the school cited, fired her and cited Sign, it yeah. yeah just 
and yeah. the, the school protected f- minorities. The school fired her. Yeah. So uh, Rob will be on going through that case tomorrow. A very important First Amendment case. Okay. But we're going to continue Emancipation Proclamation yeah. the first and, hour. And we need to do a show on the Fourteenth Amendment too. And the Thirteenth, which is about three words. There will be no slavery. But I got to read you this um, because we got into this with IQ. We'll end the show with uh, the wonderful Muslim process of castration. Okay. Oh no. Castrators, and this is coming out of an 1850 article written in London and explaining all of this. Castrators of Negroes buy them and then sell them after having mutilated them on the Turkish market. That is, if the victim does not succumb to the operation or its consequences. As to the methods used, they have remained as primitive as in the past. This is the 1850s now, uh, when this was written. The child, the child, are between 6 and 10 years old. The child is spread out on the floor of a table. The sexual parts are tied at the base by a rope, and these parts they operate on with one vigorous movement of a razor. The wound is then dressed with some small shot, lead rifle shot, with some astringent substances, boiling oil or warm honey. Once the bleeding stops, they fix a kind of lead nail, two inches long, slightly curved with a thickened end in the urethra. Until then, is, until it is completely healed, this metal rod enters the bladder. It is connected by threads of linen tape, which encircled it. This is all so the sheikhs could have their thousand wives, and these people have no sexual capability, but they can take care of the, uh, the women. It circles the stomach and kidneys and is kept in place by uh, one piece of cloth attached to the belt in front and rear. And it goes on in detail, and the second procedure... They would actually, um, a second procedure, more barbaric, they remove the organs, then introduce the nail into the urethra, and then buried the patient in warm, dry sand while the assistants trample, trample ground around him, kept him there for several days. If he lived, he was healed. If he didn't, he died. Out of 100 operated on, 6 to 12 years old, 90 succumbed. This is uh, part of the Islamic slavery process that still goes on today. So, and yes. also, yeah, and also the female genital mutilation also. But whole nother that, thing, that's no, a whole other thing. Not related to the slavery issue, but, but another. But well, actually, it well, is. It, is. it actually is, because uh, they anyway. don't leave the res, do they? Yeah, nope. Nope. Well, right. Um, okay. Let's see. I guess that's it, folks. Uh, 150 years plus one day to the sesquicentennial, uh, Susquehanna. Sesquicentennial. The, 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 the sesi, uh, sesqu- what is it? 150 the years. Sesquicentennial. <laughs> sesquicentennial. Se- no, ses- sesi. You said it right the first time. I got to look at it. S- centen- yeah. Sesqu- Stop it. No, you- Centennial. Yeah, no, you Say it again. I'm with it. <laughs> uh, we don't know what it is. Sesquicentennial. All right, 150 <laughs> years, but we'll be back in just about 150 minutes. That means tomorrow. Take it. Easy. That's tomorrow. Mañana. Mañana. We're out of here.